to have a look and see who's in my green room tonight. First up, one of our finest young film and stage actors, a genuine Hollywood superstar. Ladies and gentlemen, it's James McAvoy. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Philip Stubbridge here, sir. Millican here, but let's get my next guest out. He burst upon the scene in TV. Shameless since then has gone on to be one of Hollywood's A-list stars, starring in movies like X-Men First Class, The Last King of Scotland, Atonement, so many more. It's the fantastic Mr James McAvoy. <laughs> How are you doing, James? Uh, after that rousing reception, I feel rather... Yes. Uh, I feel better about myself. That's so an exciting you. reception. They thought Barry Manilow was coming out. It must <laughs> be that. <laughs> Uh, you know, well, you're a big star now. Here's the weird thing about you, though. I don't know if you know this. Uh, I think quite a lot of people don't know you're Scottish. Yeah, it's, it's strange, that. Eh? Because I said you were on the show this week, and someone said, oh, is he, where's he from? And I said, he's Scottish. And they went, I thought he was an American. Really? Must... Me, an American? Yeah, but they must wow. think you do the American <laughs> accent well enough, or they've seen you in those movies. Oh, uh, I don't know. You know what it is? It's this weird thing where there's only six million Scottish people in the world, and there's six billion of you lot, so... Hold it. You can't just lump us all together like well, that. Oh, there's us in Scotland, and then there's everybody else. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, no, so you, you, if you want to act a lot as an actor, you kinda, you, you've got to develop an ability to do accents and, and do all that. So, but it's nice, you know what I mean? Because as an actor, you want to be able to play other people and not just always be telling stories about some guy from Drumchapel. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Uh, although that's lovely. Um, and do they understand you, though, if you, if you are working in America with the Scottish accent, do, do they...? Cos even my accent, which is, I think, the Queen's English, sometimes over there they don't <laughs> understand me. The, the one that always sticks in my mind is Robert Redford. Uh, <laughs> there's a name. And, um, <laughs> Robert Radford, yeah. and um, he, he, he did this whole thing where he was sort of like, he wanted me to stay in character and... and so was he, he was directing you, wasn't he? He was directing yeah. me, yeah. He was in this thing about the American Civil War in which I was playing an American. He said, so I want you to stay in character and, and stay in accent all the time. And, and I was talking to him about four weeks in and I was like doing the accent and saying to him like, oh, of course, because you want me to be in touch with the character all the time, I'm doing this accent and all that kind of stuff. And he was really up front with me and he just went, no, it's just because I can't understand a word you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I just beat myself, by the way. Yeah, that was really <laughs> very good. <laughs> Uh, let me ask Barry, though, cos, Barry, we have, uh, you know, a, a, a rich uh, array of accents here. You have Philip, of course, speaks like he was made in a laboratory to be on TV. <laughs> but we've got, we've got a Scottish accent and a South Shields accent here, which is quite strong. Do you, do you have any trouble understanding anyone here? Why, I? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He's been rehearsing for hours to get that one. <laughs> 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 sort of right. oh. Thank you, Barry. Why, <laughs> why? Like Dick Van Dyke's with us. <laughs> um, OK, so uh, when you're working on an accent, though, like America's not like that, how do, you, uh, how do you know you've got it right? Because a lot of um, people from over here, when I see movies, I think sometimes it doesn't ring true to my ears. Yeah. I think one of the main things is not to try and get the sound right, actually. You've got to try and make sure it's still your voice, just with a different accent, cos I think what a lot of people do is they end up putting on a funny voice. So it's still got to sound like it's coming for your belly and your chest and your bum and your sort of, like... It's, it's all, but it is, it's all the cavities in your body that make the sound, doesn't it? It's them that give you the resonance, so your bum is a big cavity. <laughs> anyway! <laughs> Um, Mine is. Yeah, that's just, that was my, that was my <laughs> version of a serious answer. <laughs> uh, so, so, basically, so it's kind of relaxing into it and not trying too hard. Could yeah. you do a, uh, a South Shields accent? Oh, well, I don't know if it would be bang on, but it, it would be, like, in the vicinity. That's How's pretty that? good. That's that pretty right? good, yeah. 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 My mate, when I first went to drama school... <laughs> oh, I can't do this, cos it's just like one of those annoying actor things, like... Oh, go on, see it. Oh, here we go. Uh, when I was first at drama school, we had to sit in front of people from different backgrounds and teach each other how to say particular things. So the first thing I ever learned outside of a Scottish accent was sitting in front of my mate, Ross Waiton, who's from North Shields, I think, Ross, forgive me if I'm wrong, and he taught me to say a divinant now what's going on. Divinant. Divinant now what's going on. Divinant now what's going on. Going on? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, it was a, a remarkable success, this lesson. 
think he's from North Shields, who's from South Shields, they just speak very differently there. Yeah. Do you know what? It's like chalk and cheese. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, the accent I thought really you nailed as well was, uh, and it wasn't more than just the accent, but playing Professor Xavier in X Men First Class, yep. which is a tough one because, yeah, which is a great movie, of course. <laughs> you're great in it. Um, but it's kind of a tough one, I guess, because you're playing a role which is another actor has inhabited, but uh, in the older version, it was Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Uh, and so do you, do you think, OK, do you have to sound a bit like him? Did you ignore that? How did you finesse that? Well, I thought it was really important to ignore everything that any other actor has ever done. Um, <laughs> well, partly, partly because you want to be able to enjoy it for yourself and yeah. all that, but also partly because what's the point in going back in time if they're just the same as they were in 2004 yeah. or whenever it was they shot those other films that were really good, honestly, but not as good as ours. And <laughs> um, uh, so it was really important. And also, you're setting the first one in the 60s and the, the next one in the 70s, you've got, like, loads of groovy dialect that you can get yeah, yeah. a hold of that you don't want to ignore. Um, if I ever play him in the 90s or in the noughties, then, uh, then I reckon I'll be mimicking him much more. But the next one's the 80s, so I'm trying to think, how can I get Harry Enfield's kind of Wonga mad character... <laughs> loads of money. Into... <laughs> yeah. Just go Wonga, loads of mutants, loads of mutants. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but uh, well, the, well, the, I guess it must have been a nice thing to know that when you got the part that you weren't going to have to shave your hair off because <laughs> yeah. he is, of course, bald and he is bald in the comics, but... Well, I did actually shave my head um, and then turned up and they went, no, 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 no. It's the 60s, we want him to be, you know, be haired. I don't know, what do you call somebody who's got good, I don't think be haired hair. is the be right word, Be haired? What's be haired? Is that just somebody who's well-listened to? Pursuit? 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 Someone Pursuit. just Pursuit. not Pursuit. bald, I think, is... Uh, uh, somebody, yeah. They wanted me to be well, not bald. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And so my hair was about that long when I turned up. Yeah. I got the news after I shaved yeah. it. Don't shave your head. And um, I was like, all right, um, cheers. <laughs> uh, and I turned up with that much hair. So they put in the hair extensions. Wasn't so it? the next one, you said it's set in the eighties. The next one's going to be called yeah. X Men Apocalypse. That's and right. you haven't started filming that yet, I guess. We start that in April. I do this play first, which I finish in April, and then we go straight on the day after I finish the play. Okay. And in that, is he now going to be unhaired? Uh, I don't know, actually. I think that he possibly will be. He probably should be. But how do you um, look bald? Do you look good bald? Cos I know people who think they're going to look bald, and then when they shave yeah. it off, they look weird bald, you know what I mean? <laughs> I think I'm going to just look like a Glaswegian Ned bald, do you know what I mean? <laughs> a Ned is a chaff. Um, a non-educated delinquent, and um, <laughs> and I think I think I'll probably just look like I'm like I'm pure gonna eat you, you Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is that is proper Magnetic body. Um, okay, you mentioned the play, uh, uh -huh. so you're back on stage here, and you so you were last time you were on stage was Macbeth. I was one of the great roles any actor could. Have. I thought you were going to see one of the the great versions of Macbeth, but it turned into something else. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll take up the mantle. It was one of the great Macbeth. <laughs> so when, and when you were doing it, how was your how was the Scottish accent? Did you pull that off? Ah, you know, I'd rather just make sure it was a good performance. Yeah. And make it nice. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it was nice. It was, although okay. I did go a bit sort of Chuchter and East Coast rather than Glasgow, so it was that was strange. But you, I don't think of him being Glaswegian, do you? Macbeth? No. Well, he's from he's from where's he from? He's from Inverness. Yeah. So he's from, he from Inverness. Is he's that, from Inverness. Is that in the play? Well, he says he's from Cawdor. And that's up near Inverness. So his football team would be Inverness Cali Thistle. Like he would support a football team. <laughs> well, every man's got his passions when he's done with killing people's kids. Do you know his what I mean? football team, <laughs> his football team would be whatever football team Lady Macbeth told him to support, and you know it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that was quite a good joke, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they'd get something. So. So, uh, this play, The Ruling Class... The Ruling Class. I'm excited about this because this was a movie, I remember, but it was a play before the movie, It was a it? play before the movie, then it became a movie, and then nobody ever touched it again from the 60s. Um, and I don't know what the reason for that is, because it was loved in its day, and I think it was Oscar-nominated as a movie as yeah. well, but nobody's wanted to touch it again as a play. I think because it's really sort of... It takes a lot... Um, for the performers to pull it off. It's one of those ones that, if you get it right, it is going to be an incredible piece of... Uh, a piece of evening for people. There's a... There's a... There's a way to sell something. Come, Come along and have an incredible piece of evening. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I don't think they should put that on the poster. Nah. <laughs> nah, what an incredible it's a wonderful piece of, of evening. Boy. <laughs> um, but it's sort of... If, to try and describe it, I suppose it's like... If you imagine Downton Abbey, right, but in the 60s and everybody's on acid, Wow. And, um, and Hugh Bonneville comes back from mental hospital 
which he thinks is a dancing academy. And he's been there for seven years. He's come back with a lot of moves. That's for it's real. Not, it's not really like Downton Abbey at all, is it? No, but it is. But it is. <laughs> because it's all a bit posh folk. And, oh, okay. and, and then he comes back and he tells everybody that he's God. And, uh, and the wheels all come off. And there's a lot of song and dance and there's a lot of um there's a lot of critique of the aristocracy and things like that, that. sounds like a spectacular piece of evening thank you very much <laughs> yeah, you, know, you want to use that <laughs> you can have that it sounds great though but i imagine i would have thought from the way you've described it there quite a tough one to pull off because that's a, a fairly way out there premise i always go for this the tough pull off um i <laughs> come on <laughs> Did I mean that? <laughs> or did Lady Macbeth make him say it? Yeah. <laughs> God, it's a good joke. I'm working that joke. <laughs> you will see that joke at the Comedy Awards in a month's so. time. <laughs> what was the question? I can't remember. Uh, no, it's a tough one to pull off, imagine. It sounds yeah. like it's a real uh, a mix of weirdness. All the best ones are tough ones to pull off. We're going to keep saying pull off yeah. until, <laughs> until we get a silent response from pull off. <laughs> So, in trying to pull it off, um, <laughs> so, uh, no, the best ones are always hard to get right. <laughs> Thank um, you for saving us. And honestly, I mean that. I kind of, my favourite kind of theatre and my favourite kind of movies as well is where I'm watching an actor on the edge of failure and I'm watching a director take such big risks that I feel nervous for them because when they pull it off, ah! <laughs> I really didn't mean that one. Uh, but when they get it right, um, <laughs> it, it's sort of uplifting for the audience as well because there's a tension involved in going, is this going to work? Is this going to work? And that's when you get exciting new stuff, I think. And even though this is a play from the 60s, it feels like something that was written today. Yeah. Well, it's, it opens January the 16th, I think. You're just starting rehearsals now, aren't you? We're just starting rehearsals. We open uh, January the... Nah, nah, like you said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we are at... It's I'll be there even if you're not. Yeah, it's no. the 16th. <laughs> Is it the 16th? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe so. Uh, but you're quite... Um, as I understand it, you, you, you like bike riding. I know you... Do you scoot around town or you have I your used fast to scoot. bike? Uh, you used to scoot, actually, I do. You? I scooted in today. You used to scoot. I love you scooting. You good scoot. I mean, I saw you turning up once or twice on your fast bike. And, I yeah. think, and now you've got, a, you've got a son, and we're not going to talk about that too much, but I know, you know, are you allowed to ride the bike? Do you feel that's a... I was, I was, when, when my wee boy was born, I was going to get rid of the bike, and it was actually my wife who said, don't, it's part of who you are, and it's... Um, and you should keep it. And she's so much up for the back. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Uh, wow. um, is that you? Yeah, that's me. Wow, yeah. but you're not moving there, you're just leaning. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a green screen behind me, and it's one of those ones you put 20p in. Wow. Um, I don't go over like that. I wouldn't wish that. I that, don't. Was, that was Ron Haslam, uh, and up at his school, that taught me how to do that. Your knee is actually touching the ground. At yeah, that. yeah, getting your knee down. That's what it's called. And you'd be doing what, 15, 20 miles an hour there? <laughs> <laughs> About. I think at that point it's not too fast. I think that's about 40, 45 minutes. Well, that's terrifying. Like that. But you come off of that, you're going to know it, aren't you? Yeah, not too, but Ron had me on the back of his with my arms round him with this little sort of handle that's on the fuel bit. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he said to me, uh, and he's an ex world champion, and he said, uh, if, if you get a bit scared, just squeeze me and I'll, and I'll slow down. So, of course, the kind of guy that wants to be Jerry Butler in 300 in you goes, like, I'm never going to do that. And, <laughs> macho, um, macho, yeah. Ma yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I didn't, to my credit, I didn't, but he was doing a wheelie at 140 mile an hour at one point and, um, and slamming the front wheel down at an angle, wow. which is death to any other rider wow. and making the whole thing shake. But um, he did about eight laps and by about the sixth lap, I was going, I'm not going to squeeze him, please go into the pit lane and then go round and do the seventh. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I've physically got the strength to hold onto this bike oh. much longer. And he came in just in time, otherwise wow. I would have squeezed him. And did the... <laughs> Did the movie people know that you did that? I wasn't making any kind of movie at the time. No, so but what nothing. about the ones that you would be making a movie for? Um... He's not like a slave. He can do stuff in between. <laughs> that he's <laughs> they don't own him. If they've got, uh, like, like X-Men, a massive great set of movies and they depend yeah. on you and they knew that you were uh, doing a wheelie at 140 miles an hour, barely holding on... Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just, can we cut that better? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Pop Studios don't take my house away from me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's lovely to see you again. Thank I you. love having you on the show. The place sounds great. You must, uh, you're, I can sense that you are fired up about it. I really am. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be something that is very unexpected. It's going to be uh, challenging and funny as all get out. Yeah. It's uh, 16th of January. It's called The Ruling Class. It's going to be great. James McAvoy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
Wendy's sticking around as well. After the break, music and chat from Barry Manilow. Stick around. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out. You know who he is, a musical superstar. He has sold, get this, this is remarkable, over 80 million albums worldwide. You're a fan, aren't you, James? Yeah, I have been for a long time. A long, long time. I've actually... Uh, one of my key moments of learning how to perform was uh, pretending to be you. Uh, <laughs> and there's actually video footage that Jonathan Ross does not have. Um, of, you, of me <laughs> in a pair of my sister's white trousers um, singing Copacabana and, um, and it was really one of the first times I ever sort of got on stage and sort of gave it some welly as a performer wow. so, and it was because like, when I was a wee boy it was my favourite song and you were one of my favourite singers. So, you, so now that you're in the business you owe me a thank I you. I owe you 5% right? of everything I've ever done. Do you do it? I mean, do you ever? Do, do you still bust it out ever? I've busted out uh, Copa, uh, the story of Tony and Lola, uh, a couple of times, uh, quite a few times in karaoke. So yeah. do, you, do you know all the words? I th yeah, I'd say it. Yeah. And, and, and if I play piano for you, would you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this could be. This could be a fairly special moment. As long as you don't mind me not being a patch on you. But you know what? Oh You're very lucky because I phoned your sister earlier and she sent her pants over. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's too good. Do you mind playing a little bit of Copa no. for us? Oh, well. Shall we uh, enjoy? Okay, let's go over to the piano with Barry Monaro and everyone here. Let's go do this. <laughs> you want a slug of water? I want to pick the one. All right. Here we go. This is going to be great. Well, it might be terrible, of course. I mean, it might be. <laughs> Either suspect... way, how bad can it okay. be? If it's terrible, it's just it's like give me there. a break. Okay. <laughs> so now, I don't want to. We shouldn't detract from basically the vocal stylings of Mr. McAvoy. That's right. We have some percussion instruments. Maybe we could just join in on the percussion. And you guys, this is a new dream duet. Do you have? Do you have something? Do I have something? <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. I don't know what this is, but I think it's been on this morning and some bloke was very proud of it, wasn't he? <laughs> ah, here we go. Okay, ready, James? Her name was Lola. She was a showgirl with yellow feathers in her hair and her dress got down to there. She oh. was Miranda and do the cha-cha. And while she tried to be a star, Tony always tended for across the crowded floor. They worked from eight to four. They were young. They had each other. Who could ask for more at the Copa? Copa Cabana. The hottest spot north of Havana. Everybody. Oh, at the Copa. Copa Cabana. Music and fashion world. The fashion at the Cobra. They fell in love. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you so James much. James McAvoy, Sarah Millican, Philip Schofield. There you go. That was. That was pretty fun.